Okay, I think we're finally ready. Um, welcome everybody. I am Jean Bednar. I'm the president of the Gail Borden Public Library Board of Trustees. And I'm so happy to see so many people here today to honor the life of Mike Elk, one of my dear friends. I, I prepared a little something. I'm going to MC this event, so we'll be hearing from a few other people, but let me tell you my story first. Um, I just wanna say how humbled I am to be here today to honor Mike, one of the nicest, most gracious, funniest, and smartest guys I ever met. I first met him when I ran for the library board here back in 2001. It wasn't my plan to run against him. Uh, I was told that he and the other incumbents were not going to be seeking re-election since their job of getting this beautiful new library funded had been accomplished. So I agreed to run. And then all those incumbents changed their minds. So there I was <laughs> with my name destined for the ballot attending candidate forums, going up against the great Mike Elft. I was a nervous newbie. I was a stay-at-home mom, finding myself running for office, and I'll never forget the example Mike set as I sat there in my first forum. I was terrified, of course, um, waiting my turn to speak, and Mike spoke before me, announcing that he wanted to run for re-election to the library board because of all the perks. Which, if you know anything about the library board, you know there are none, there's no perks. <laughs> I mean, back in the day, we didn't even have our library fines forgiven. Now, there are no more library fines, so truly, there are no perks for library board members. But Mike's leadership and experience set the example that I try to follow. Perhaps the people who attend our board meetings would agree that I try to bring the Mike Alft humor to the room every month. Needless to say, that first time I ran, I was not elected, but Mike was persistent. He encouraged me to join the foundation board, and once there, I became more comfortable with library and community leadership, probably Mike's plan, and when a trustee uh, resigned midterm, Mike encouraged me to put my name in the ring uh, to be appointed to the board, and that's how I first became a trustee. Um, it also took our friendship to a new level, and Mike made a point of talking to me whenever he saw me at an event. And shortly after I joined the board, he warned me that I wouldn't be able to shop at Jewel anymore because everyone would be stopping me in the store to talk to me about library issues. <laughs> Tongue in cheek, of course, although that has happened to me a couple times now in my 17 years of serving a couple times. Um, many of you may remember a restaurant on Douglas Avenue called Cafe Magdalena. For a short while, they held pub quiz there on Thursday nights, and this brings me to my other treasured time with Mike. I somehow ended up on a four-person pub quiz team with him. I was supposed to bring the young person's perspective and knowledge of all things to that group. I was not that helpful, but it was such a treat for me when I was able to enlighten Mike with um, uh, my answers during the music or the photo portion of the quiz with, oh, that's a Super Tramp song, or that is definitely Val Kilmer in that photo. Mike's the reason, though, that we ever occasionally won. John was on our team, too, John Stefan. Um, his answers were more along the lines of, that would be the limited test ban treaty enacted after the Bay of Pigs crisis, or the most common mineral in North America is feldspar. So we actually won money a few times. Mike was one year younger than my dad, who lived in Chicago but would come and stay with us occasionally. And he and Mike met when we invited him to join us at Pub Quiz uh, one week, and they forged a quick friendship. Mike even took him on a personal tour of Elgin, which they set up on their own. Both men were such great storytellers. I let them go on that tour without me, a decision I regret to this day. Just think what I could have learned from the oral history that was spoken over the several hours they spent together that afternoon. Just as with my very endearing memories of my own dad, Mike will forever live in my heart. I don't know how I got so lucky, but I am eternally grateful to have had him as a mentor, 
a library board colleague, a pub quiz teammate, and most lucky of all, a friend. Until we meet again, Mike. Thank you. We're gonna hear stories like that from a few other people, um, so I'll just keep this moving along. Um, next on our list here is Bill Briska. He's going to tell us what Mike and Fran meant to Elgin. I, uh, I was asked to speak about the impact that Mike and Fran, most importantly, we must remember Fran, had on the city. But even in preparation for this, I have to, and I, I it took a, re a refreshing look at all that they contributed and all the time. And it brought me back to this, which I should have said earlier when the family was gathered at the museum, is that as much as we are indebted to Mike and Fran, we must also be indebted to the family because their contribution to the city to some degree came from the time that they took from the family. So the family needs an equal acknowledgement and gracious thank you from the city of Elgin to them for what they did, the children and by extension the grandchildren. That's just an aside. So, uh, <clears throat> well, okay, so thinking about this, and uh, I was told, you know, come on, you got to come up with something about this. It, uh, and I think it, it's very, very difficult to quantify the impact that both Mike and Fran had in the, on the city of Elgin. It's, and it's also, also very easy to underestimate the extent of that impact because it was, it was so large. And people impact the lives of other people primarily through the direct contact. And by direct contact, I mean face-to-face -face contact, one-on-one -on -one contact, in-person contact, that kind of uh, type of interaction with people. And few people have the opportunity to make the level of impact on others as do teachers. With more than 40 years in the classroom, Mike was one of U46's longest serving in, uh, instructors and one of its most popular. And let us not forget he also taught in Dundee and did some classes at ECC. Just, just imagine how many thousands of students sat in front of him. Just imagine the impact that he could convey to those people. And Mike's public service as an elected official included high profile positions of the city council and as the mayor and the less visible position as a library trustee. And don't forget his service on boards and as a member of various organizations. His impact was felt in the direct contact that he made with people at endless numbers of meetings, events, or simply instances where he was being pulled aside in the hallway to listen to a citizen's complaints or comments or their latest brilliant idea. Just imagine how many thousands of people came into direct contact with him this way. Just imagine the impact that he conveyed back to those people that were interacting with him. And his popularity as a public speaker, which of course he attributed to the fact that he worked for free and kept it brief, placed him in front of hundreds of audiences over many decades. And just imagine how many thousands of people experienced that form of direct contact with him. Just imagine that impact on those audiences. And then there's another level of impact, and it's a little bit comes out of the indirect impact that people have with people. That contact was delivered in part through his more than 1,200 newspaper columns. And this is the way, this is my first acquaintance with Mr. Elf. It's through the columns. And while they were in the newspaper, they were sort of apart from the grind of daily headlines to me. 
Instead, they were like little tales shared with me by a parent or a favorite relative. They, re they were stories about things that existed all around me, but I was not aware of until his words revealed these things to me. They revealed Elgin history to me and the lessons of it. And just imagine how many thousands of other readers had that same experience. So just imagine the impact that those columns carried to those people. And sometimes Mike's impact on the people of Elgin was less direct. He is an advocate, was an advocate for what now we popularly call social justice. And just two notable examples of that. One was his support for decentralized public housing at a time when there was a severe shortage of housing options in Elgin. And decentralized so as not to create a de facto segregation of public housing residents into one neighborhood or one little community. The other is his efforts to end dis discriminating covenants which prohibited home ownership by Jews and minorities in certain parts of the city. Just imagine how many thousands of people have since grown up with the benefits of neighborhoods that were previously off limits to them. Just imagine that impact on people. And we cannot overlook the legacy of his compelling and interpretive history and the volumes of information that are found in his 18 books, 17 on local history, one on banking, almost forgotten about. Um, the, how many thousands of researchers have turned to this archival treasure, to this fountain of information, insight, and knowledge about Elgin? Just to imagine the impact that they, in turn, have conveyed on to other people from that. Now, Fran Elf did not enjoy the public limelight, but she shined very brightly in the private spotlight that her husband cast upon her. A lover of books, Mike metaphorically referred to Fran as his favorite book. And in a thank you note, he wrote to his parents in acknowledging a gift that they had given to one of the causes he was supporting. He added these words, your lasting gift to me will always be your daughter, who is the most unselfish and giving person I have ever known. This sentiment was expressed after 23 years of marriage and and in the 60 plus years long marriage that they held together, it remained undiminished in his love for her. Just imagine how many thousands of people would aspire to have such an incredible relationship. Now Fran's impact on the people of Elgin was quietly expressed. For more than 20 years of employment at Sherman Hospital was followed by 17 years as a volunteer over 6,400 hours of her time given to others. She also volunteered for the literacy, literacy Connection, and she contributed more than 20 years of service to the Elgin History Muse Museum, doing the absolutely essential but totally unglamorous job of cataloging ideas that were going into the museum collection simply so they could be found and retrieved when needed and hence be made available to others to use. In the museum business, this is called cataloging. Uh, this cataloging is called accessioning. And this is where I first encountered Fran Elft. Fran Elft was a wonderful woman, and I seldom had a conversation with her that did not leave me with a thought or an idea that would evolve further in my mind in the subsequent days. And once when we were talking about where we grew up, and how we got here, she said that Elgin gave Mike the hometown he lacked because his family moved around so much when he was young. And I thought about that, and soon it came to me the next logical conclusion, and that is that Mike gave all of us a hometown. He helped us bond with the city and make it a meaningful place for us. Imagine how many thousands of other people have had that impact because of Mike Elft. But Mike and Fran Elf in partnership and in support of one another, the key foundation of both of their lives, made an impact on the lives of tens of thousands of people. So we honor just 
not just Mike, but we honor Fran too for all that she did to support him and in turn to support the city. So thank you very much. Okay. So, Okay, thank you, Bill. Um, you know, I didn't mention before, but I welcomed everybody. I didn't specifically welcome Mike's family, which I was told there are 19 or 20 members here right now, so um, 23, okay. Uh, lots of little kids. We have um, granddaughter that I met outside earlier. Yes, welcome all of you. I know some of you traveled from far to be here today. All right. Um, Next up, we have Elgin's Poet Laureate, Gareth Mansitz, with a poem. Oh, there you go. Well, I have had fun with this one. It's the giving and the living that's what make Mike F. so great. Yes, giving in the living was his natural state. As those who knew and loved him, we celebrate and smile. So grateful Mike chose Elgin and stayed here quite a while. Mike never had a real hometown before Elgin stole his heart where he chose to firmly hang his hat, recording our history from the start. Work was scarce when Mike was young. He was raised in the Depression. His family moved so many times, 10 schools for Mike's education. Never time to settle in with roots strong and secure. Mike's Childhood had such challenges, made him wise and mature. It's no wonder Mike craved permanence when he chose Algern as his home. He embraced the joy of staying put. No longer would he roam. There was once a man named Elmer Charles whose father took the blame for giving his son this absolutely horrendous and horrible name. One day, Father Elf decided to change, pushing Elmer to the side. From now on, I am Chuck and you are Mike, so you can live your life with pride. <laughs> of course, young Elmer was grateful to rid himself of this curse, he became E.C. Alf the historian and Mike, for better or for worse. In his personal life, Mike was happy. His new name suited him to a T. But he honored his family heritage with E.C. Alf on books of history. With his new name, Mike grew confident ready to greet the world. His new name gave him lots of courage when he spied the perfect girl. <laughs> now, Mike spent time in libraries, much more than the average man. It was there that Mike was smitten with a sweet young woman named Fran. Mike's instinct to pursue her was intense right from the start. He filled out a library call slip in order to win her heart. It was a novel type of courtship to ask for a date that way, but Fran thought it was endearing this game Mike wanted to play. Fran took Mike up on his offer. The rest is history. She became his wife and shared his life living so blissfully. They were such a perfect match. Fran's patience was amazing. She accepted Mike's quirks and his life's work while their children she was raising. Fran was a natural mother, 
Soon their brood numbered four. She was committed and contented. This was so worth living for. Fran respected Mike's use of his time, knowing well her supportive role made it possible for E.C. Alft to uncover Elgin's soul. Mike spent his time and talent working long into the night, purpose-driven in his living. Mike sought to make things right. Facts and figures were his friends. He wallowed in their wake. His meticulous nature loved to find even more notes to take. Obsessed with books and numbers, Mike counted as he read, recording every title of authors living and dead. Mike's quest for knowledge never waned. Learning was his pleasure. As his shovel dug into Elgin's past, each discovery was a treasure. With a photographic memory and attention to details, Mike's life's passion blossomed fully as he related Elgin's tales. To look at Mike, you'd never know. A consummate performer was he. Entertaining his students was his delight. His methods as unconventional as could be. A stand-up comic in his classroom, he never missed a chance to use his sense of humor. While his students, he entranced. Whether standing high on his desk or singing songs and ditties, screaming, I'm melting, like the big bad witch from the land of Emerald City. Mike's imprint on these young minds would remain throughout their lives, their memory chock full of stories of a teacher beyond sublime. And so we celebrate this man who gave his life to learning, generations taught to be cheap, not cheat, and to say what they were earning. It's the giving and the living. That's what made Mike Alf so great. Yes, giving and the living. That was his natural state. As those who knew and loved him celebrate and smile. We're so grateful. Mike chose Elgin and stayed here quite a while. Thank you. Thank you, Gareth. That was great. Glad I don't have to sing. Um, okay, next up we have Jaime Garcia, who I haven't seen. Is he here? Nope. No, Jaime? Okay, that's okay. We'll move on to Mike Elft's son, Mike W. Elft, that I'm honored to introduce here. Come on up. That's an amazing poem. I can't follow that. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. I am Michael Elft. I have to say it's really odd to hear Mike Elft all day long. <laughs> I had to move a thousand miles away just to feel like I can have my own identity. But, uh, so it's nice when the phone rings, I don't have to say which Mike, the big one or the little one. So, um, our father was born on July 13th, 1925. It was not Friday the 13th. Frequently, he suggested it was, but it wasn't. He was actually born on a Monday, and we all know what Monday's child is full of. 
Monday's child is full of face. Not just the way he looked, but his public face, his persona, his social abilities to stand and speak among large groups of people, unlike me. Uh, he was just naturally good at it. And it explains his socialness and his willingness when others would just shy away, he could rise up to the occasion and speak eloquently. His quirkiness was the result, and th these are some things I can share because I didn't know his public side. I remember, I'm at home. I didn't see him teach. I didn't see him out becoming councilman and mayor and running for the board here. Um, from our view, his quirkiness was really the result of his living two-dimensionally in a three-dimensional world. And I say that because at a young age, he had amblyopia, one eye, and it handicapped his life, but gave it focus. He couldn't do sports. He couldn't play baseball. He, he, he could ride a bicycle, and he was famous for that. And, but, but in his life, he became focused. His oldest son, John, where is he over here? There he is. John also has a bit of a serious vision issue and also embraced bicycling, and that has to be our father's influence, to rise up, to accept challenges, accept who you are, and yet still accomplish things in your life. That was him. That's his legacy to us. I didn't know the public side. He was a teacher, but I only knew he was a teacher at home. He was an historian and author, but I only heard the thundering typewriter resonate through the house in my amazement as his, at his ability to handle, handle a microfish machine and his ability to clip out newspaper articles and leave a trail of notes on paper, always in pen wherever he went, little pieces of paper, always. Like many others at the time, my father was poor. He was a depression child, growing up and moved a lot for survival. It wasn't because they wanted a better view. He attended the 10 different schools, and as a result, he had few to almost no friends during his formative years. His severe vision was made it difficult to befriend other children. He was different. His name was Elmer. Where is Elmer? He's off to Schuster's, was a big advertisement. Followed up quickly was, was uh, Elmer Fudd, who became famous when my father was a teenager. That wasn't lost on other children whom he barely knew. So he became Mike, and E.C. Mike Elf, and he became it. He never went back. He called him Elmer. He, he looked at you like you didn't get it right. When he, re when he reached college, he found the school for four, year, four years, in one school, four years. It was amazing to him. He found our mother and stayed with her for 65 years. He lived in a small house in Elgin for over 50 years. This was not a man interested in just picking something up willy-nilly and leaving it tomorrow. He stayed with everything he did. He bought simple cars and he wore them out. Can you imagine that wearing out? He would have never leased a car. That just didn't make economic sense anyway. Um, he strategized ways to feed a teenage teenage son on a dollar or less a week, maybe a day, but as I recall, it was a week, a dollar. And he's telling this to me, his son. <laughs> Our sensible mother often saved us from a man who would sing loudly in a classroom, be cheap but don't cheat. She did a great job. After the children left home, my frugal father and mother suddenly took vacations. <laughs> Not those trips, uh, uh, Lincoln-related trips and Civil War trips with six of us in a little 61 Rambler, but they went on vacations around the world. I'm looking at who are these people? <laughs> 
but he never flew first class. Everything he did it made economic sense and was sensible to my mother. In the 70s and 80s, I became aware that my father was charitable. I had no clue. He gave money away, money, he saved every penny, and yet he willingly and without fanfare gave to charities, frequently donating time and money to projects, people, again, always sensibly, and even so much that his own family had no idea that he was doing this. The, the Elgin Area Historical Society was created in our living room. All I knew was at the end of meetings there might be peanuts and M&Ms. <laughs> With his political and teaching years finally in the rear view mirror, he frequently did speaking engagements, always promoting Elgin and Elgin history. I asked him if he got paid for this and he laughed. And he explained he did it because he got wonderful free meals for 15 minutes of talking. <laughs> In his final five years, I will forever be no known as the person who stole him from Elgin. In 2016, I uprooted him and brought him out to be with me near, near Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. And it was hard. It was hard for him. Um, and, and this is the town he loved and loved them back. And it was a tough move. Our mother, his wife of 65 years, passed away, and I was with my father and saw him crushed. I and my family was with him his last five years. He gradually floundered from old age without my mother and without Elgin, it was hard to watch. I have a lot of little notes here, just like he would have done. I did bring him back one time, and he just smiled, and he just so enjoyed it. He had tears in his eyes, being here and leaving here. It was harder the second time, and he never came back. I, I arranged things before COVID. Remember that? Who remembers COVID? <laughs> he made it to Elgin on that visit, visit, but then this virus raged. There was no coming back. There was no repeat performance. And he and I became very close. Um, at one time, I arranged an online Zoom meeting with his friends. He was down a bit and isolated, but during that meeting, he absolutely lit up, sharing stories, talking about Elgin with those who shared his passion. He was his old self and young again. He couldn't believe this Zoom. He wanted to know if other people knew about it. <laughs> At that moment, the world was still bright and revolved around the town he adopted and adopted him back over 65 years previously in 1953. That's the moment I will remember. Thank you. Okay, apparently we have found a filler for Jaime. <laughs> Denise Raleigh, one of our stellar library staff, is going to speak. Come on up, Denise. I would say your title, but it's so long I can't remember it. Yes. I like the stellar library staff, that worked. Um, I have been a board member for Central D. Information, proudly for over a decade, and it's Centro's 50th year anniversary this year, and Mike Alft, being in this community most of those years, if not all of those years, made such a difference, uh, social justice being near and dear to his heart. So Centro d'Information would like to uh, give the family this award, 
and it says, Community Service Award presented posthumously to Mike Alt in recognition of service and dedication to Centro and for making our community a better place. Okay, I think we're at the grand finale, finally. Um, we're going to unveil a plaque. And Carol, why don't you come up here too? Carol Metal, our CEO of Gail Borden Library. Um, <laughs> yes, um, Mike did not forget the library either when he was giving money away, so we're very grateful for that, thank you. All right, I'm gonna unveil this and I'm gonna read it. I haven't seen it before, so I didn't get to practice this. So for everything that Mike and Fran have done for our com community and our library, Gail Borden Public Library. Okay, I'll just talk loud. The Mike and Fran Alft River Room. This room is now named for them. I don't, I don't know. Take, take the mic off. Oh, okay. Here, let me just slide it. There, there okay. There we go. Whoop, hang on. Okay, I don't know if anybody noticed when they walked in, but it is also above the door on the window. Uh, E.C. Mike and Fran Francis Alft made significant and enduring contributions to the Gail Borden Public Library and the Elgin community throughout their lives. As a teacher, author, mayor, local historian, prolific reader, and library supporter, Mike, 1925 to 2021, touched many lives. Likewise, Fran, 1928 to 2016, was a loving wife, mother, Sherman Hospital medical technologist, and a volunteer at the Elgin History Museum and Sherman Hospital. Can everyone hear me? Okay. I don't know. All right, here we go. Mike was a library leader who served in various capacities. As a library trustee, 1995 to 2007, and library foundation director, 2001 to 2010, he championed the planning and construction of the main library, 2000 to 2003, and Reiko Branch, 2008 and 2009. Mike garnered support for enhanced library services and groundbreaking exhibits, such as Giants, African Dinosaurs, created by Project Exploration and Space, Dare to Dream. Mike was a staunch defender of intellectual freedom. In 2010, Mike was named an Illinois Library Luminary in recognition of his work with libraries. His fondness for the library could be seen at special events where he portrayed the 19th century inventor, Gail Borden, for whom the library is named. Mike's leadership skills were not limited to libraries. He served as a member of the Elgin City Council from 1963 to 1967 and was mayor of Elgin from 1967 to 1971. He was one of the founding members of the Elgin Area Historical Society, 1961, and the Elgin Sports Hall of Fame Foundation, 1980. He taught social studies at Dundee Community High School, 1950 and 1952, and was a teacher of economics and government at Elgin High School from 1953 to 1994. From the time he was 15, Mike kept a record of the 3,547 nonfiction books he read, and that didn't include fiction. Many books Mike read while sitting in an armchair at Gail Borden Library. Mike contributed to the library collection and programs too. He authored 17 local history books, including Elgin and American History in 1984, Elgin, A Pictorial History, 1991, Elgin, Days Gone By, 1992, Books and More, A History of the Gail Borden Public Library in 1996, and Elgin, A Women's City, 
2008. He wrote more than 1,200 articles in the Courier News about local history and gave several hundred presentations. Mike and Fran met in a college library where Fran was working. After Mike and Fran married, they moved to Elgin in 1950 and lived here for 65 years. Fran was a member of Searchers and the Sherman Hospital Auxiliary. She enjoyed her children and her grandchildren, listening to music, reading, and traveling. The Mike and Fran Alft Room is named after Mike and his wife and best friend, Fran. Even after reading thousands of books in his lifetime, Mike often said, Fran is my favorite book. This plaque will be hung in here starting this week. This week. <laughs> And from now on, this will be known as the Mike and Fran Elf River Room. Thank you all again for coming. This concludes our program. We do have a parting gift for everyone as they leave, but feel free to uh, stick around, check out the plaque, and visit with friends. Thank you.